Okay, so now we'll take a look at marginal and joint probabilities. So we have these generic events in a, a cross tab or a contingency table. And in order to start calculating probabilities, we're going to need to know the totals. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find the totals for the rows and the columns. So if I add the column of A, 5 plus 29, I'll get 34. Column B, 9, 18 plus 4 is 23. And column C, uh, 43 plus 10 is 53. Adding all of those up, I believe we get 110. And then we can do the same thing for the rows. So for D, Row D, 5 plus 19 plus 43 is 67. And then for row E, 29 plus 4 plus 10, it, that's 43. And that also adds up to um, 110. All right, so I have all my totals. Now I can find the probabilities from these counts. All right, now, for instance, here are the marginal probabilities right here. These are the marginal probabilities when I do, well, these are the marginal probabilities when I divide them by the grand total. So, for instance, in the bottom margin there, if I wanted a probability of A, that would be column A's total, 34, so in the margin of column A here, um, divided by the total of 110, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.3091, if you round it to four decimal places. So that's how you'd find the marginal probability of A, is the probability of only A. And then you have some other marginal probabilities. For instance, the probability of B then would just be 23 over 110, and the probability of C would be 53 over 110. And those would be the marginal probability for the columns. And then the rows have marginals too. Let's see, the probability, for instance, for D would be 67 over 110. Uh, and the marginal probability of E would be um, 43 over 110. And those would be the marginal probabilities, these probabilities coming from taking these numbers in the margins and dividing them by the grand total. We also have inside these counts, which are the joint probabilities. So let's take a look at the joint probabilities. These are all five marginals. All right, so for the joint probabilities, the joint probabilities, for instance, if you're in the row and column where A and D intersect, like right here, you can use that number five to calculate the joint probability of A and D both happening at the same time. That's going to be 5 over 110. And the probability of A and D then is about 5%. And then you can do the other joint ones here. You have six of them in total. And then, for instance, the probability of A and E comes from the intersection where A and E meet. So that's going to be 29 over 110. And that's the joint probability of A and E happening together. And that's going to be uh, roughly 26%. And we have the other joint probabilities there. Um, for instance, the next one would be the probability. Uh, let's try one last one. Let's look at the probability of uh, C and E. The probability of C and E, we just go to the intersection of C and E, and the joint probability there would be 10 over 110. And the
the probability of C and E then is roughly 9%. So this is how we find joint probabilities. And I want you to notice one thing here. If we try to find the joint probability of, for instance, the probability of A and B, there's no intersection of A and B. Since A and B are both in columns, there is no intersection, then this probability of A and B is equal to zero, which means that A and B are what we call disjoint. They cannot happen at the same time. So probability of A and B happening at the same time is zero. Their joint probability is zero. This is what we call disjoint or mutually exclusive. Disjoint. So, that is marginal and joint probability.